Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's me, Strikeout1066, and today I thought we could do a new game. Uh, so far on my channel, I've pretty much only focused on Hoi4, uh, but I'm starting to look to expand, and I figured um, this is a really fun game that I played when it first came out. Um, I played it pretty recently. It's a, it's a $9 game, so I figured I'd start off with one that if you guys enjoyed, maybe you guys could pick up. And it's called Game Dev Tycoon. So, pretty basic overview. I left it on the screen for you guys to read. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start, but I will, uh, I'll explain it as we go. So, um, this game, you start off as one single person. I'll, I'll try to make it look like me. I don't have glasses, but... Um, but basically you start off as a single guy or girl, um, in your, in your company and you make video games. Um, so basically you don't actually code any video games or do anything like that, but you pick the name, um, and we'll call this 1066 Industries. I don't know why. And, uh... We will do strike out 1066. Actually, let's pick a random name. Let's be let's be Johan because I like that name. Uh, would you like to import? Yeah, we'll, we'll import hints. Um, yeah, there we go. All right, so basically, I'll uh, I'll get you. I'll started uh, we're gonna get all these achievements because I just got a perfect um, hold on one second let me let's see if we can disable tutorials there we go all right so you click develop a new game you can come up with a name but first we want to pick a, a topic so there are all these different genres. There are, I think there's like a 60 or something like that. Let's see, 3 by maybe, I, that's probably 20. I think there's about 60 genres. Um, and so the one that sticks out to me, Spy. And then we go ahead and, oh sorry, that's the topic. And then the genre, there's Action, Adventure, RPG, Simulation, Strategy. As we progress, there's going to be other categories as well, but I think our first game could be an action uh, spy game, and we'll call it uh, 0077. Uh, I like I like making kind of funny titles based on the the games that are that are really out or the or the movies. Um, so basically, you come up with the, the name, come up with the topic, the genre, and what platform it's going to be on. So right now, PC has 44% of the market share, which means that about half the people that are buying video games own a PC. As we progress, we're going to want to you know, target the, the higher percentages, but the G64, I don't like making games for. Um, just because eventually it gets off the market and I like uh, developing for the PC. I don't want to have to pay 20000 out of 70000 to develop there when I can only pay 5000 Which brings you to my next point. All these things cost money, right? If I want to upgrade to higher graphics, I have to pay 10 k And I have to pay rent. I have to do all this stuff. And since this is an action game, we really want the engine and we want the gameplay up. Stories and quests are not important in action games. Um, and each each month we have to pay rent, so it's really important that we try to make the best games possible. Basically, this game is just as long as you can continue to make video games um, and try not to go bankrupt. We'll see. Um, We'll give this game a couple of run-throughs here on my channel and see how well we can do. Um, and you can see three pluses means, hey, okay, bump that all the way up. Two pluses mean it's more important, and one plus, one minus means you know it's not that important. Um, 
So the way that this game works is we put all these these different points into this and as you develop things bugs happen. If I were to click finish right away uh, it would not have been good. Um, so I was just waiting there. Sometimes at the end a couple more can pop out. And since things are paused I'll take a second and explain this. Excuse me. So basically as we go on our character uh, Johan is going to get better at sound, graphics, world design, and as we level up, better things are going to be able to come out. Once we get engine all the way up, we're going to be able to build our own engine, and we'll be able to take things like artificial intelligence and add that into our game. So right now, we're going to release our game, and we're going to generate a game report. If you see this little question mark, that's the rating that our game gets. Depending on how high or low of a rating we get, we're going to make more or less profits. Alright, so we'll see how good of a game it is. Everything's out of a 10, so we want to get as close to a 10 as we can. Oof. It looks like, a honestly, a fairly average start to the game. We're going to get a, a 6 here, and... That's not bad, right? This is our first game. We don't have any real you know, firepower that we can throw into these games. It's only one person. It's a pretty generic combo. So basically you see that we made 22000 off of our first sales. And the game cost, I think, like 15000 to develop. So we're already in profit, right? And that's basically what we're going to keep doing. Keep making new combos. Keep getting... Fans, fans basically will buy our game when when we put it out. Just like how I bought Fallout 76 from Bethesda when maybe I shouldn't have. Uh, so with this research, we make a custom game engine once we hit 23 research points. We can also research new topics, all that stuff. Sorry guys, I'm a little tired. I, I had class this morning. Uh, so we're going to do and or a time travel adventure game and we're gonna do that for the pc and we'll call it um <clears throat> call it back to the past instead of back to the future um and these first couple games are gonna be pretty lame i would say story is is the most important Pump all of that in and this game is basically about getting those sliders correct. Um, it's really fun. It may not seem like it's challenging, but it's definitely it definitely takes a lot of challenge. Or it definitely takes a lot of skill to master this game. Um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, we'll see if I fail or not. This is I haven't played this game in a couple months, so they're, they're I think they're finally done updating it, but. They've definitely put in a lot of stuff since I've since I've played. Um, and as we become more and more successful, we're going to upgrade. We're going to be able to hire new people, which is going to get our numbers higher. Already, our design is way higher than last game. Um, and basically, I'm just going to focus on putting out as many games as I can um, to get as much experience as I can, to get as much research points as I can. Um, and it's a lot of fun. I would definitely recommend it. I'm gonna try to do a good balance of games on my channel going forward. Games that are old, games that are new, games that you know maybe cost a little bit more money, games that are cheap like this one. I just want to uh, I want to come up with a bunch of different things. Um, so Ninja, let's call it Shuriken of Death. Um, so hopefully if you guys like this game, you guys get it. It's definitely worth $10. You can get definitely get... Let me see how many hours in this game I have. I have, I have about 40 hours in this game. So for $10, $10 it's definitely worth you know, 40, 50 hours. Nice. So this is a good game right here. Good balance. 7.5. That's a solid start. Um, so action games, we already did that gameplay so the thing is i just released an action game two two games ago so i don't want to continually pump out the same genre same topic 
you want to mix it up. That's why I went uh, adventure, action, all this stuff. The next game I'm probably going to do like a government, either simulation game or a strategy game. Um, and I, I have experience in this game, so that's why I kind of know what topics work. But it's really fun to experiment with with topics. There'll, there'll be events where it comes out where it's like, New topics sell better, or crazy topics sell better. So even if, you know, government action games aren't the best, you can put one of those games out, and as long as you have good design and technology, even though it might be a bad combo, the current market might make it a good seller. So there's all these factors that play into this game, and, and I'll get into more things as they pop up, but... I think this is a really fun game to play. It's it's pretty passive. So if you're into Hearts of Iron, like maybe that's the first thing you got introduced uh, watching on my channel. This is a good passive game, just like Hearts of Iron is, where you're able to do things without actively, you know, playing a shooting game, for example. So we just got enough for a a custom engine, and we're definitely going to do that. So this is another, looks like, six and a half, seven game. So that's pretty good. Um, again, we're not gonna we're not gonna blow anyone out of the water just yet. Usually, usually by year two or three, um, that's when we're able to to really post some stuff out. So the game's off the market. It generated 131 in sales, which is good. Um, Alright, so now what we're going to do is probably the most important thing in the game. Generate a new engine. Right? So we're going to research that, and then we're going to build one more game, and then we're going to pour all of that money into an engine. Now, in these engines, you're able to put you know, better graphics, better whatever in this, and that really is what progresses your games to the next level. If you think about it, there's games like the Unreal Engine, or there's engines like the Unreal Engine, the, the engines that Skyrim and, and Fallout use, and in these engines you're able to put these better graphics, these save games, these features, um, and that's really what takes your games to the next level. So I'm going to go ahead and develop one more new game so I can get some money flowing and then build my, um, my next engine. So we're going to do... Um, Build that wall? Question mark. Um, and the game that we're going to develop is a government simulation. So you're not really picking the features. You're not saying, okay, this game is going to be, you know, you become the president of the United States and you have to do this. It's more vague. We're going to just pick a topic and just pick a, a genre. So it's it's not as hands on as maybe you know naming it and then picking the features but it's a lot of fun and we're gonna see how how i do how how 1066 industries goes maybe at the end of this episode i'll i'll show you guys you know uh i'll show you guys my my latest one i don't remember exactly when it was i think it was last semester or be a couple months ago just so you guys get a sense of where this game can lead to, if maybe this this hasn't piqued your interest yet. Um, nice, and all this stuff is leveling up, and you can see I can now research these things. So, forty thousand, and I'll get game tutorials, and that's why that's why I'm gonna need to, to do this stuff. Oh wow, this is like a hit game, a nine. Nice. So that's an eight over eight overall. So that's gonna have some good sales probably. So we can see. So I'm ranked 14. So out of all the games that are out right now, I'm ranked 14, which is gonna give me more fans, more stuff, um, and it's just good overall. So we're gonna research, or we're gonna generate a game report that gives me research points, and then with those research points, we're gonna put it into. Um, we're gonna put it into mono sound. Hopefully, we get enough research points, and then we'll try to develop an engine. 
engines are expensive. That's why I want to. Um, that's why I want to uh, get all this research done, get, get games flowing, get money in, because I'm gonna drop like 130k on the engine, and then the game instead of it costing 15k to develop, it's gonna cost 30. So I really need to to get this stuff in. So we're gonna create a custom engine, see how much it costs. All right, it's gonna cost. 150k so we're gonna call this alpha engine 1.0 and it's gonna cost a lot to make um, so we're really gonna rely on build that wall oh and it's off the market so we're gonna hope that our guy can develop this quickly because right now we're just draining money we'll see how much it costs to make a game you can go bankrupt in this game if you dip below your amount of cash that you have, you can take a loan. The size of the loan depends on what stage of the game you're in. We're in stage one, which is, you know, developing in a garage. And then stage two, we develop an office space. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll make a spy action game. And we'll see um, how much it's going to cost. 15k? I think we'll risk it. We'll call this uh, Golden Toe instead of Golden Eye. So it's going to cost 35 just to start. So you can tell this is going to be an expensive game. So it's going to cost another 25k. We might go bankrupt on this, but we're going to go all in on this game and see what happens. Artificial intelligence level design. So we got 16k and our guy's scratching his head because he doesn't know what to do. That is so frustrating. Alright. So mono sound. Alright. So at this point, we just have to hope that this game goes well. We have a lot of design points. Um, a lot of technology. So this is a good game. And we're going to put it out because we can't really wait. And, and hope that we develop more. New records. And we're just going to take the game to market and see what happens. Alright. Um, and now we're going to ge generate a game report because I want some more research points. And let's, fingers crossed, hope that we can uh, that we can get some good reviews for this. Oh man, that 4 was freaking me out there. Okay, 9. 7. Alright, good. We'll take it. That's like a 7.75, I think. Yeah, we're in the red. Okay, good. Yeah, we're good. Whew. Rank 12. Alright, now the money's flowing. That investment of our engine paid off. So we're really gonna... We're really gonna try to focus on... On just making our next good game here. Alright, um, any more research? Theology. Let's do it. Let's do a role-playing game. We haven't done that. We haven't done one of those yet. And mythology really works well with, uh, role-playing games, I believe. I don't really remember. We'll try it. What I really want to do is maybe I'll... I'll save mythology... We'll do a time travel RPG game. Uh, maybe we don't want to do RPG. Maybe we'll do... Maybe we'll do... Uh, a ninja... Simulation strategy. Yeah, I don't really remember. Um, let's do a government strategy game. And then... We will... We'll wait for this next event to happen. It basically allows you to make mature games. And that's what we'll do uh, for, for the mythology game. So we will do a strategy game. Oops. Filter keys. I was holding shift. We'll do Civil War build. Civil War Rebuilder. And we'll just 
we'll just pretend that we become Abraham Lincoln or or we focus on rebuilding America after the Civil War. And then further down the line, you can develop sequels and maybe we'll do Civil War Rebuilder 2 and that could be focused in France or or Russia or something like that. Depending on how well this game goes, we definitely will want to either make a sequel or not. But that's that's the cool thing about this game. It's very realistic you know if if a company makes a successful game uh for example oh there we go that's exactly what i wanted target audience um so maybe skyrim for example skyrim is really successful so right now bethesda is developing elder scrolls 6 and that's a sequel and that was a Skyrim was obviously a sequel to oblivion which is a sequel to morrowind which was a sequel to arena and all that stuff so it's very intuitive. If you feel like you should be able to do it, you're most likely able to do it in this game. That's what I like about it. So we're going to research target audience and we're going to make a mature role-playing mythology game. Ooh. Nice. We might get our first 10 on this. Nope. Wow, we're pumping out some fairly decent games early on. Early on, it's a lot harder than later on in the game. Because we only have one person, that means we have to research things at the same time. Or differently than we build and stuff like that. So, I'm really hoping that this target audience game that we're about to make can really... Good combo, what is it? Adventure, simulation, action game for PC. And we're going to call it Hercules... Uh, son of Zeus. And, uh, and this mature game is, is meaning that we're targeting it for mature audiences. So we're saying, okay, there's going to be blood, there's going to be gore, and different platforms that reacts better to. So if I release a mature game for the Nintendo 64, for example... It's not going to go well. But if I release a mature game for the PC, obviously it's going to go well. Um, and that really plays into it. There, the Game Boy comes out. And the best part about the Game Boy is you can make young casual games. Like a casual, I don't know, music game. Where it's just like, you know, picking. Just like Dance Dance Revolution where you, you tap the keys at a single excuse me, single time, and those games do really well on the Game Boy, um, and, you know, it's, it's all about knowing what to develop and stuff like that, so we have an interesting thing here, that's hype, so hype is, that's how, that's how many people are excited for the game to come out, right now we can't mark it, so if there's ever a chance to give an interview, we always want to give an interview, um, because that means that, um, I don't know if that means 11 out of 100, or if that's just um, 11 out of every 100 people, because it can go above 100, but basically that means there's momentum for our game. Oh, nice. This is exactly what we wanted. So maybe not as good as, as, as I would have liked, but it's not bad. Um, so we're going to do some research here. Nice. So we're building up some money. And if you guys notice, we're not making the most money, and that's because, like I said, the the game share of it. So only 20% of the market has that. So we might make something for the NES. Maybe we'll make a... Um, maybe I'll research a topic real quick. Oh yeah, a hunting game for the for the NES. And if you notice, it's called the TES. Um, they, it's very funny. They obviously they can't call the things. The Xbox is like the M box. Um, but yeah, it, it's very funny. Let's see. So we're gonna develop for whatever one has the highest market share right now. So we're gonna do a, a hunting game. Uh, is it a simulation? Yeah.
yeah so these guys so we're gonna do an action or a hunting simulation game and we'll call it duck hunter with a z hunters um and hopefully that does well you can see son of Z or yeah hercules is still doing still doing fairly well so that's good But basically, right now, we're just pumping out games to make as much money as we can. We want to get to that, I think it's $1 million mark, and then we can upgrade. Um, let's get rid of that pop-up. Um, get rid of that one, too. And you can see that, that it's all about, you know, the sliders. Um, if I were to example, if I were, for example, to... Put the one that said minus all the way up and then the pluses all the way down I would not get nines and tens I would get like twos and threes because I didn't design the game well I didn't you know make it so that that these two were, were fairly balanced and I wouldn't make it where the engine was more important on certain games and uh, you'll see if, if, if there's a topic that I don't really know what what it goes well with um, you'll see that I that I won't get a higher score. Um, so this is good. We we just got some some new stuff. We'll generate some game reports, and I think that'll be all for the first episode. We'll see what I get for um, oh casual games are really important. We'll see what I get for hunters, for duck hunters, and then we will uh, we'll end this episode. And you guys can let me know what you think. Um, if you guys have any other like cheap games or or games that you think I would like, let me know because I, I want to expand the genres and the, the different games that I'm playing on the channel. And I think that this is a perfect um, perfect way to, to expand. It's to start off with a game I'm pretty familiar with and one that maybe you guys aren't so familiar with. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this first episode. Thank you guys for tuning in. And I will catch you guys in the next episode. Peace.